Okay, it's June 11th, my brother's birthday today. Happy birthday, Rob. Uh, you're here at the weekly community call for chaos. So um, as always, super happy to see everybody here. And you all probably know this already. Um, I will mention it though, this is under the chaos code of conduct. So if you've not read that, you should do so. And just make sure you know what you're, what you're signing up for and what you're agreeing to, because being in this meeting, you are agreeing to be a part of that and to uh, adhere to that. So um, that being said, let's get started. I wanted to first give a huge shout out to the Chaos Africa community for two years of absolutely amazing awesomeness beyond what we could have ever predicted or expected. I mean, just absolutely fantastic. So just wanted to give them all a shout out. Yay. I don't know. I don't think Ruth is here. She might. I'm not sure where she is today, if she's traveling or if she's home, but um, maybe she'll show up in a little while. But anyway, all of you are amazing and you've all made the, the community so great and such a wonderful place to be. It makes me really, I might get a little choked up here. It makes me really proud to be part of chaos um, just because this chapter is absolutely hands down, just beyond amazing. I don't even have words. So I don't know if anybody in the community who's here today wants to say anything or anybody else wants to say anything. Okay, well, great no, job. Guess not. <laughs> great job to all of you. <clears throat> We're so proud of you. We're so happy that you're here at Chaos. Like, yeah, I can't even describe how happy it makes me to have you part of our, our community. So thank you, everybody, for all your work. Okay, before I start to cry, um, we will go on to the next item on our list, which is about the Chaos Cast podcast. Alice, I don't know if you want to say more about this or if this is pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, just looking for the mute button. Um, so one of the things that we are doing with the podcast is um, opening up to ask for suggestions or questions from the community. Um, so a lot of podcasts take Q&A from the listenership and from the community and and answer them on podcasts so we're basically opening up is there any questions that you have around any of the work that chaos does um you know let's keep let's just open it up as broad as possible uh for now and we'll see if <coughs> if the questions get really wild we might have to you know train it in a bit but but yeah like let, let's just open it up and say is there anything that you would like to hear us podcast about is there any questions that you have or topics that you'd like to be discussed by any of sort of you know your familiar faces who, who've been with the project for a long time and are very knowledgeable or maybe things where <coughs> excuse me we can get some special guests in and, and ask them about stuff so yeah go ahead sophia yeah so this is more just like a, a concept for the podcast and i was going to put it in a thread but then you brought it up here so i'm going to ask you here um, I had a submission to All Things Open that was not accepted, but they're like, we loved it. We'd love to have some content associated with it, associated with the conference, and basically now opened up a way to submit written or audio or video format of the thing. And I thought the thing that was designed to be a panel might be actually a good fit for a podcast. Um, granted, I need to go in and ask the other participants if they'd be open to it, but I don't know if we've done anything like that in terms of using a chaos podcast release with a conference set of materials. I didn't know if there would be any interest or conflict associated with that model. And I'd, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. I don't see a conflict because it's a different community. Yeah, I think that idea sounds, I think that's reason why, why not? Okay. Yeah, I, I figured it, it might be an option. I just wanted to see if there was any concerns before I floated that option to the other participants to see if they would be interested. But I think it would also be the topic would be a really good fit for chaos as well. Um, so it's a couple of members from the chaos community were part of it. So um, I'll, I'll start a thread offline uh, to, to make sure that's OK and get buy in before I pitch it um, to both parties. What's the conference material, Sophia, that you referenced? Um, so all things open had 
many submissions and clearly they couldn't have all of them. And so they were like, basically, we'd love to feature your content in some way with the conference. Nice. Um, and so they basically gave a list of options. You could be interviewed by one of the conference people. You could submit a recording of your talk. Um, you could submit a written article for the talk. Um, and basically they were like, we love to have this content in some way in the event. Um, but I think given that it was really meant to be a discussion, I think a podcast would be the best format. Okay. Um, and then if it's a podcast, then it can also be a chaos podcast and then yeah. you get a little bit of the chaos brand in there as well. I didn't know that they had done that. All things open, like had no, given... this, yeah, this okay. seems new to me. I hadn't seen, I didn't see this option last year. Um, maybe, I don't know if it's been extended to everyone who didn't have their submission accepted. So maybe it's not a blanket offer, but it seems like they're trying to incorporate more content, but they couldn't have more spaces in the conference and that's how they're doing it. Okay. That makes sense. So Sophia, this, so you're envisioning that we would release it as a chaos cast and then just send the link to all things open to promote it and they would, they're okay with that. Um, I would ask them to and make sure that it's okay if it's recorded as a chaos podcast, but it seemed like they were kind of open to anything in the terms of how I read the email. Um, so I'll make sure that there's no conflict. And if there is, maybe then it just lists as a chaos cast podcast and I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, just given that there's already a, a platform there um, versus just recording a podcast in the wild, which seems odd. Okay, cool. Um, I'll be both sharing more details. Gosh, it seems like they've extended this to, to more folks. So. That's a great idea on their half, on their part. Yeah, I mean, I think um, anything like that where it lends itself to discussion format, you know, there's no harm in, in, in proposing it. And, we can we can take a look at it and see see if it fits um i don't see why not great cool. and we've done that for other things as well we did that with um the panel that we did at lf member summit around viability where we did a podcast around it to try and promote the the talk because we were kind of just starting to talk about viability it was i think it was before gary had actually released all of the models so we've, we've done things like this in the past. I think it's a good fit. Okay, cool. Um, Alice, do you want Sophia to open an issue then in the community repo? Oh, um, sure. <laughs> I'm not super uh, familiar with using the repo in that way, but maybe that's just something that I need to get more familiar with. We actually we actually um, have a place in the doc. How we would normally do it? No, we have a place in a in the doc that we can add it. So I would just uh, I would just add it there. Here, I'll drop the link in here. Oh, thanks, Colin. That way we have everything in one place because there's a place at the bottom for episode ideas, and that way we can keep all the ideas in one place. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Any final questions, comments? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Alice. Uh, no worries, my internet's a bit spotty. Okay, let's go ahead and go forward. Any other, if, you, if there's any other questions, comments, something we can drop it in chat and come back to it. Not a big deal at all. Um, Don, I'm gonna pass this over to you <laughs> to take on. <laughs> Woo, we've, I think we finally renamed uh, bus factor. Uh, contributor absence factor is what we landed on during the metrics meeting. Um, this is after a very long discussion on the issue. So, um, so that, that's where we are right now. Um, I am looking for a volunteer or volunteers to help with coordinating the update because what we have is a very popular metric that's mentioned in a lot of different places within chaos including a lot of different metrics and metrics models. So the, the problem being that, uh, okay, I like that, Sean, don't have a cow. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry, I got distracted. It's my job, uh, I guess. 
<laughs> um, it will require a bit of coordination, sorry, because those, because um, the metrics and the metrics models and the website, um, a lot of our content lives across a whole bunch of different repos within the chaos community. And we need to coordinate it with things like getting the redirect in place. So there's a fair bit of, of work that needs to happen around that. But um, if somebody's interested in, in helping out with it, if you could, if you could reach out, that would be, that would be great. Maybe reach out in the, the website. Uh, there's a WG-website channel. So maybe reach out there and we can coordinate some of the work there as well, because that would be super helpful. And it's a lot of GitHub work, so it gets you your little green dots in, in your GitHub profile. Just saying. Uh, any questions about the renaming? Okay, moving on before anyone can say that they have a better suggestion. Yes, I love it. Okay, boom, done. Okay, moving on. Um, so yesterday, the amazing Chaos Africa chapter held an event with Project Enable, which is an African organization. Uh, the purpose of the event was to introduce folks with, living with disabilities to open source to try to um, encourage participation, contributions from these folks and just teach them about it. I know there are some folks here on this call that were um, responsible for coordinating that meeting. So if anybody wants to jump in, I'm kind of looking at you, Victoria and or Ruth, whoever would like to speak up here and just tell us about it and tell us how it went because we're super excited about it. Okay, I could start and then Victoria could add in some things as well. Um, because she was uh, she and me right were the main organizers for it. So it was really it was really good. Um personally it was um an enlightening experience for me, right? Um and for context here, like Elizabeth said, we have been planning this event to reach out to people living with disabilities. Initially, we had started the small working group, uh, the all focus group within chaos um, called Disability um, Inclusion Mainstream, where we're trying to um, also like include people uh, living with disabilities more into open source, how can they contribute and be part of the community. Um, and we, we have run this outreach event that we hosted yesterday in collaboration with Project Enable. They are um, one of the experts, uh, organizations that um, kind of um, have a community of people with disabilities. So we went, they provided us, provided us with like a venue um, in their community space and we hosted the event. We had like talks, um, different people from Chaos Africa talked about contributing to the different uh, parts like design documentation um talked about what open source is how they could use open source even did like an interesting demo which um you know was really engaging to the attendees and we had so the project enable um group they had like a sign language they provided also the sign language um interpreter um so that's what that's how we're able to connect with um, some of attendees that had like um, had hearing or hearing disabilities and we even got questions from like people um it was a very interactive group of people that were interested in open source interested in the we had um as we had the demo and you know some people asked questions around with them on how to open source and i think that was the most interesting session where people um kind of like they were asking how they could, um, you know, use um, code spaces. It was really um, very enlightening for them learning about code spaces because, like, most of them had not learned about code spaces. Um, and another interesting session that we did yesterday was, like, we had a discussion. So um, we had invited um, someone, um, which uh, Stephanie, she's going to be part of the community, definitely. Um, she, she kind of held, like, a, a conversation to ask the attendees how better we could include them in like open source uh, or, in, or what their challenges are around participating in like virtual communities and some of the challenges that um we we did take note of these challenges that were shared but I think one highlights highlight one that I had yesterday was like um one of the uh, persons with like hard hearing complained about how like for some communities they use like 
use of voice notes um to explain things and like it's not accessible to to them because like um they have like a hearing disability so like it's not accessible like we use of voice notes and sometimes even in meetings right so we um I think I did take note of all the suggestions that were brought um by by them and I will share that later on but it was a really good event we also brought swags we shared like the uh, chaos and the lab swags um to them as well and we also had a cake. Um, we had a cake um, because this week is like the uh, two years anniversary for Chaos Africa. So we had like a cake and we celebrated with them as well. And we also had another partner for like accessibility in Nigeria. Um, also like had, we had like volunteers from that community as well, um, help with events and even like help with swag. So it was a really interesting event. I could share like some pictures. Uh, in the random in the random channel so you get to see how interesting it was so, yeah thank you Ruth um Victoria was there anything to add from your end um Ruth has pretty much touched every part of the event but one of the things that stood out is um, the community ensured that nobody was left out. Either they have a visual impairment or a hearing impairment, nobody was left out. In fact, the people who are deaf and mute were communicating, giving feedback, answering questions. It was amazing. And we also found out that there are actually some people in the community who are also coding, which is interesting. And the whole point why um, accessibility should be implemented in open source because this, these people are part of our community and they want to join in. So working with them and relating with them yesterday was an amazing experience. I love that. I love it so much. Do you um, do either of you envision any of those folks uh, coming to chaos and becoming more active contributors? And if so, is there anything we can do um, up front to make that journey a little easier for them? Yeah, so we want to also like engage with the project enable team. So like even after we've done this event, um, because we had we had people interested like full along during the session. So like what's what are their needs? Like do they want to join this lab? Because for some of them, um, we had a mix of audience, like people that are tech savvy and some people were not like, you know, in tech already. So um would be reaching out to them to kind of know, okay, like what's um the number of people that have interest in joining the community and then just kind kind of like onboarding them. Uh, because like for some of them they might not know like what Slack um about Slack or like we need like to especially like onboard them. So um that's like an action item for me to reach out to the team. I know some of like the Chaos Africa members connected with some, some of the attendees as well. So would um reach out to them and then would like list out like we when we had that discussion we had like a list of things that challenges that were shared so i think it's something that we could also like implement from those challenges that were shared uh, we could start implementing from them and then when people join we we keep knowing like where do we what do we need to change or how do we need to improve oh yeah go ahead victoria Okay, so I would wanted to add as well that the research team headed um the research team headed by Lamy um we provided a form that was shared to their community for the attendees of the event. So the forms were shared to them and we did get feedback of their names, their email, and we can still reach out to them and like Ruth say, um, said we are forming a relationship with project enable team so we can still get back to them if you need more information so the information we gathered the research team gathered is to um reach out to them to know how we can help them join in um, the community and all but we have their information 
Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, and then one final question for you both. I'm absolutely not trying to give you more work to do, <laughs> but I think this would be a fantastic blog post and or um, podcast to talk about this. I'm um, just like what you learned, how your experience was. Maybe we could invite some folks. If it is a podcast, maybe invite some folks that were at that um, event or uh, could be like maybe a collaborative blog post or something. But I think that what our experiences collectively would be so interesting for folks to read about and to learn about. So just keep that in mind. I'll just throw that out there that I think it would be really cool. Again, not trying to give you all more work <laughs> or voluntold, voluntold you for anything. <laughs> No worries, we could put something together, definitely. Or maybe the um, folks from the community communications working group can also help, you know, if, even if you're able to just like put some bullets together and then somebody from maybe that team could help, you know, flush it out into a an actual blog post or a podcast or whatever, whatever we think. So just keep in mind that they're there as well for a resource. Any questions, comments, anything else for um, Victoria or Ruth on this? Okay, well, great job. Thank you for doing that. Absolutely amazing. I'm in love with all of it. Um, oh, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you about. I think before the event, you all did a, um, a informational session for folks who were gonna be volunteering. And I was just wondering if that was something we could, um, I feel like we talked about this, but maybe make that uh, available to all of chaos to, or whoever wants to watch that or, or learn about that. Is that something we can do? I forget what, I feel like we talked about this, but I don't remember. E yes, if I can say something. I shared the link on the chat that day, but I think I could share it on the Slack channel. That would be great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think the chat, it was in Zoom chat. I think those get lost. So I would love to have that more in a permanent place. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Victoria. I appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to this next one. Um, who would like to, I'm not sure who put this on here, <clears throat> but who wants to chat about it, it? Me, it's pretty simple that we had proposed to have one metric model meeting maybe a month under Chatham House rule, um, basically just the rule where you can't attribute what is being said to folks there. And we also wouldn't record it. Um, this is a way to get participants who are from different organizations who may not otherwise be able to attend chaos meetings because we do record them. Um, and this is particularly important as we kind of explore the ISO standard stuff. So I'm not sure if people have uh, comments on that or or anything, but everybody seems to be pretty okay with it, at least in the metrics model meeting. And we would have to, we would also have to change the time to make it more convenient for folks, particularly in Japan. <clears throat> This, this meeting has moved from late in the day US to early in the morning US. It's, so it's kind of moved back and forth a little bit here and there. Just so one of our trickier time ones to do just because the, the differences are so large. Do we have anybody from Pacific that usually attends those? I don't remember. I don't well, think so. Divya. And no, yeah. Pacific time zone, like California. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Okay, so would this be, um, so the time change, would that be just the one meeting or would it be all the meetings would change? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, I think, okay. Oh, go ahead. My, my thought was just the one, but as soon as you have two different meetings at two different times, calendars are already a pain and that seems to really throw people off. You know, if you have one like one meeting on a Thursday at whatever 9 a.m. U.S. Central, and then the next Thursday it's at 9 p.m. U.S. Central, that seems to really throw people for a loop. Okay. Yeah, I can confirm. We tried that with the Augur meeting, and it just confuses everyone. 
So if there are folks on this call that want to be involved in the metrics models group and or the ISO standards discussions, um, you should check that meeting out. Maybe what we should do is just have an ISO standards meeting once a month. Like don't don't mess around with the metric model time. And sure, we can still have conversations there, but we would just have one ISO standard meeting a month at this new time um, that would run under those the Chatham House rule. Yeah, I like the idea of it being a separate, completely separate meeting with a separate, separate title, separate purpose, because I think so I agree with Sean, like having the same meeting at two different times gets super confusing for people. I also think having two different types of meetings at the same time where people are like, is this the recorded one or not the recorded one would also be confusing. So I think if we just make them, I like your idea of making them completely separate. And just do it once a month and we can invite folks from there. So maybe I'll reach out to Divya and see if she has a good time that would work for her. You know what I mean? Kind of in that region. And then we can just kind of go from there. Because I think even if she could find a time, honestly, that would be convenient for folks in Japan and for her in India, like even if it's not terribly convenient for us, Divya is really good at giving updates on Slack and trying to make the metric model meeting. So, you know, instead of trying to squeeze a time in very early morning for them or very late in the evening for them, maybe they could just go ahead and find a time that actually works conveniently during the day and we can just do updates from there. I'll reach out to Divya and talk to her about that. Sounds good. And I know that her, uh, the Chaos Asia community call is early morning for them, like 8.30, but it's um, nighttime for, for us the night before. So maybe something like that where it's, I mean, that does get confusing because it's like one date for some people and the other date for the other people, but um, yeah, it can be done is what I'm trying to say. So we'll figure it out. Yep. Do you want me to put you as an action item, Matt, to write? Yeah, I'll do it right away. OK. Oops. OK. Cool. Uh, and Ruth has also shared pictures I see on the random channel from that event that we talked about up here. So thanks, Ruth. OK, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, Chaos Education Update with the Carpentries. I'm not oh. sure who I did. I put that on too. So Peculiar and I just as Peculiar has been leading a lot of the work around the education videos, we had a chance to meet with folks at the Carpentries. And for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, the Carpentries is a it's a community of people uh, and an organization that is focused on uh, developing educational materials to help people think about technology at, you know, a little bit larger than just open source. Um, typically, the community members put together workshops that are, say, like four hours or a day or two days, and these workshops can be replicated by other people. So, like, you know, Elizabeth, you and I would put together a workshop on something. We would kind of provide slides and a general structure for that workshop. We would post it in a GitHub repository, and it's something that other people could, um, you know, implement locally, wherever they might be located. Um, so we had a really nice talk. Um, naturally, the videos that that Peculiar is putting together, they're short, you know, they're five, six minutes. So we talked a little bit about how what we're doing with five or six minute videos is kind of different <laughs> than what they're doing with like half day or up to three day workshops. Um, so one of the things that we kind of landed on is is a couple well maybe a couple things one is um, to put together uh, maybe one or two carpentries workshops and that would be like in the four hour format and there are things that could be run perhaps in association with chaos africa they could be run you know prior to to um say an event here in the u.s wherever it might be um, but the workshops would be two so one of the workshops would be focused on um, really that open source 101, you know, just helping how helping people get involved in open source in those very early stages. Um, and he, he had expressed a lot of Toby, the guy we talked to expressed a lot of interest in such a workshop. And then the other would be a workshop 
would around uh, centering DEI or inclusion. So it's kind of, he's looking at this kind of from two directions. One is like, how do you help people who are new to open source kind of make that first step? So that's, you know, kind of from the newcomer perspective. And then the other is, you know, we can tell newcomers how to make those first steps, but if the communities themselves are not very receptive <laughs> to those first steps, um, it's not gonna do a whole lot of good. So the really the second one is around helping communities think about, you know, how to provide paths to to for for newcomers. Um, and together he thinks those would be a nice combination. Um, so Peculiar had expressed interest in, in starting to work on these as well, which I think would be a really nice contribution to the Carpentries and the work that's already being done. And then um, finally he asked for something, he said it would probably be really interesting to think about, you know, if we did a, a workshop that was say open source 101, um, to think about, you know, we have videos as well that are kind of addressing that same thing. And what a limitation of a video is or what a limitation of a workshop is like how content delivery folks should think about videos versus workshops and how they might be complementary to one another or how somebody might go about making a video who's already doing a workshop just kind of the how we as a as the chaos project would think about those two different forms of delivery and the example that i brought up is um i teach a class here at the university and one section of the class is in person and the other section of the class is online and they're, they're just they are so different the classes the content is the same but what i think about in terms of what i can accomplish in an hour and 15 minutes in person with people is very very different than how i try to accomplish the same thing with um you know like a recorded video and so just, you know, kind of doing a blog post or a white paper about or paper about um, just how how people could think about that kind of stuff. So that's it. And thanks to Peculiar for being there. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, also, point of note, Don just linked us to a podcast uh, on the Sustain OSS podcast about them. So Let's just drop that link in here as well. Yeah, it was a really nice, really nice episode. Are they, um, are they like, a, they're not a company, are they? Or are they just like an organization, nonprofit? What are they? I, they? I don't know what their tech status is, but I think they receive a lot of funding from organizations to do the work that they do. And then the, the, um, the, courses themselves, say like a six hour workshop or whatever, four hour workshop is developed by community members. So that's the open source component. So like they are an open source project in the sense that they take contributions from a lot of people across the world in the form of new workshop material. Hmm. And those new workshops are, they can, um, they're on GitHub. So they kind of function in that Okay, nonprofit. So they kind of function in that same way. Like if you delivered the workshop, whatever that workshop might be, workshop A, and you're like, you know, the middle of the workshop was really slow and boring. Here's a PR to try to improve the workshop for other people in the future. So it's open source. I'm not sure how much of a community there is. You know, like in, I don't like, I don't know if they have regular meetings and, and things like that. So I'm not real sure. Seems like it might be a little more like drop in, do your thing, and then yeah, be a like good Yeah, yes, oh, right. Yeah, a lot more asynchronous mm -hmm. than I think what we do. Interesting. That's really interesting. Questions, comments for Matt or Peculiar? So that's it. Just okay. this. This happened like two hours ago, so we'll see how it goes. Fresh off the block there. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, let's go ahead and move on. Um, can Code of Conduct Committee update. I can give the update. 
we are working on formalizing a reporting procedure and response procedure and we are we have something already drafted still looking through it internally and then we'll plan to share it with the community for feedback here in the next couple of weeks Great, thank you. And thank you to that team for continuing to make things better for us all. Uh, any questions for Georg or uh, the rest of the community? It's nice to see that moving forward, thanks. And I'm guessing you're not in your basement, Georg. No, I am, um, <laughs> okay, I'll turn off there my like, background. There are like motorcycles or something in the back. Yes, oh, I'm on my front porch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's our puppy. Oh, hey. But yeah, I have uh, muscle cars driving past and motorcycles. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the Shire was, I don't know. Yeah, the calmness of your background has been disrupted. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, questions, comments, no? Okay, let's go on then to the mentorship study. I don't know who put this on here. Um, I did, this is quick. Um, this is just a, I don't know if this is appropriate, so also open to feedback if it's not appropriate, but um, there are some researchers, Anita from Oregon State, and some of her researchers are looking for interview candidates for a project investigating mentorship and open source, mentorship and open source communities. And they're looking for participants. Um, I, given that I know some folks might be open to that in this space, I wanted to promote it here. But um, I also think if this is not a good space to be inter recruiting interview participants, that's also good feedback for us to know, and we won't do it again. Um, so I guess that's a twofold question. So what is the study, Sophia? Um, it's looking into the benefits and challenges of mentorship in open source communities. Okay. Um, is it a scientific study? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My only like from, like, Anita, Anita Sarma's group. Yeah, it's from it was one of her PhD students is running it. Okay, my only I don't have a problem with you bringing it up here. You there is just this notion of self selection bias when you put it out to people to participate that they will. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have yeah. people interested in this that opt in. You know, I think that that's always sort of the challenges for this sort of thing. And I was like, do you have any socials that I can bump or anything like that? But I think it's getting harder to find candidates unless you just show up in a community and say, anybody willing to talk to us about this? <laughs> it's okay, so. as long as you just acknowledge it. You know what I mean? And just yeah. like, limitation of what we're doing. So that's all. Uh, well, if anyone is open to it, just find me on Slack and I'll, I'll share your contact info. I'm not gonna blast the group for it, but I just wanted is it, to- Is it an interview? Is that what it it's, is? It's, it's an interview. So it'll be an interview view with a I believe there is some compensation okay well um yeah I was gonna offer even before the compensation but yes you can definitely <laughs> so if we'll throw it in are you yep. looking for um from the mentor uh side point of view or the ment mentee point of view that's a good question let me see if she specified that Um, I think they're looking for mentors. Mentor point of view. Okay. Yep. So I'll just put that in the notes. Uh, okay. Any quest other questions for Sophia that she may or may not know? All right, uh, let's go ahead and go on then. I'm guessing this is from Sean, maybe? It is. Um, I mentioned last week that we were doing a little work with the hosted system and uh, we finished that up yesterday. So if it's been bouncing up and down for you, that will 
not be the case anymore. Okay, That's thanks, it. John. That's the whole thing. All right. Uh, well, we have five minutes left. Any final questions, comments, things we didn't talk about that you want to talk about? I'm good. Oh, I, see. No, I, have, I have one. Um, are we planning to have any presence at FOSSE or is it just going to be some of us might attend or no? I know we had a booth last year. I don't think we're going to have a booth this year. Uh, we're trying to be a little bit um, tighter on our booth presence. So we will have a booth at All Things Open. I think that's the only one for the rest of the year. Um, not that it was a bad conference. It was a great conference. Um, but we're just trying to be a little tighter on our budgets. No, that makes sense. I was just curious. Um, I know uh, CMPs for that are due on Friday. So if folks are thinking about attending, now's the time to think about attending. Um, if we have a quorum, we can try to do a meetup, but something super informal and does not inquire budget, just fun. We can have fun without budget. Yeah, I, I do plan to be there because I'm going to be in the U.S. anyways. And Don just dropped in the link to the um, call for proposals. So if you haven't submitted one and you would like to, you should do so. All right, anything else for the community today? Just welcome to all newcomers who are here on this call today. Your first time. It's great to have you here. It really is heart heart. I've been told that if you do this, then it means you're old. Like the kids do it a different way now. I don't know how to do it, but showing <laughs> my age by doing the heart hands, I guess. I think I've just never done that in my life. <laughs> what, what, what's the other way? And how do you? I don't know. I, it's like, something with your knuckles instead. This, this one. This know. is how they do it, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Isn't it? it is? Like that? That's what the tail. That's what the Swifties are doing. Um, so I feel like you get of... hearts and I don't get hearts. What? What, Sophia? How, did, how do you do that? You like your? You produce the hearts. How did you do that? You have that? to turn on your reactions in Zoom. I don't know. Well, you're, maybe you're less symmetrical now, Sean. You did it. Yeah, I, so now I'm making me think about it. <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> that is true. If you think about it, it doesn't happen. <laughs> Oh, well, anyway, welcome to all the newcomers who are here. We do love you. We're glad you're here. So same time next week, show up again, and we'll have all new stuff to talk about. Hope everybody has a great rest of your week, and we'll see you here next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye.